and welcome to Vlogmas part 2, Let's Make Christmas Dinner. So in the spirit of being in Germany, I have my Chris Kindle Market cup out. Uh, although I got this, I bought this in Chicago. Anyway, so after doing some extensive research and speaking to a ton of friends about what they eat during Christmas and Christmas dinner, uh, the consensus was roast duck. Some households do roasted rabbit, uh, but in this house, in my family, we don't cook any meat at home. So instead of doing a, a rabbit or what was it like? A roasted duck, we're gonna do a vegan meat. I hope you know and you understand that this is not supposed to be an educational video. None of that. This is just me experimenting in my kitchen. So we're gonna have vegan sausages, the second best thing in German food. We're gonna do some German style potatoes. We're gonna also dabble in some spätzle and to top it all off, we are going to make some very traditional and very German dessert. So I hope you'll subscribe and without further ado, let's get cooking. Let's start with the first course, comfort food, which is Kejuspetzel, which is kind of a take on mac and cheese. Don't come for me if that's wrong. Uh, but the main star of this dish is your spätzle, your onions, some cheese, some butter, and that's pretty much it. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple prep. Number one, we're going to melt some butter and fry the onions till they're golden brown and crispy. It usually takes about 20-30 minutes. Um, and the second component, spätzle. I bought store-bought one, but you can try and make this by yourself. I don't have the equipment to do this, but um, yeah, we're just gonna prep this one on the side as well. And then we're gonna layer the spätzle mixture with the crispy onions and the cheese and roast it in the oven. Doesn't that sound just like wonderful? Okay, so this one is for my fried onions and this one over here is for cooking the spätzle or just, um, yeah, kind of putting the finishing touches on spätzle. They are extremely buttery and crispy. You can really like hear it. Anyway, so this is the last step of this preparation of the queso spätzle is just layering this and baking it. So I have a really shallow baking tray. You can bake this in like a like a deeper like a cake dish or a casserole dish. Of course, I don't think I mentioned it before in the video, but this is my take. This is the first time I'm cooking any of this. So it's not authentic. It's not going to be 100% authentic. But what I love about this dish, and I've eaten this before, is the crispiness when you bake it. So for me, baking this in like a larger kind of a surface area means a lot of crunch. I have my sheet tray. I have my fried onions. I have my prepared spätzle and my cheese. Let's get to layering. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna spray this with um, a little bit of olive oil. Uh, you can, I don't know, maybe line this as well. I don't have any parchment paper, so we're just gonna roll it. Also, my oven is heating to 400 Fahrenheit. Okay, and now we just layer it. So first goes our spätzle, spätzle. Then goes my fried onions, and I'm gonna include all the leftover butter. Oh my god, look at that. That looks delicious. So 
So this means every single bite is going to be super crunchy, crispy, hopefully, and every single bite is going to have um, a decent amount of onions, which is what I want. And finally, the leftover butter. No butter goes unused here. So beautiful. And for the final topping, our cheese. This is what it looks like and let's pop it in the oven. One thing is, if you can make a lot, this is just for two people. If you make a lot, you can actually layer it and I think that tastes pretty good too. Um, it's more like a lasagna style, um, but that should taste pretty good as well. And I just pulled this out of the oven. Look at that. It stayed in the oven for about 11 minutes-ish. I waited till I saw the cheese melt and the cheese bubble. It looks fantastic. I'm going to hit it with some salt and pepper. Um, you can taste it at this point, but I didn't put any additional salt, so I think it it could benefit with like a finishing salt and some pepper. And our first course is ready. Let's get to the next course of our dinner, which is the potato salad. Now you probably have heard a lot about the German potato salad. We are going to make that today. So we have our waxy potatoes, uh, just standard. We're gonna boil them and then rinse them. We have some vinegar. This is a very German ingredient. This is called Essig Essence. We have some vegetable bouillon. We have some German mustard and more onions and of course some butter i pulled my potatoes out they are completely boiled totally boiled and i went ahead and peeled them once they were cold enough to be handled what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna slice them and then let's make the sauce i went ahead and sliced the potatoes in these this shape um, and put it in kind of like a larger dish. Let's move on to making the sauce, which is super, super simple. All I did was to the onions, I added my vegetable bouillon with the, with the necessary amount of water. I put some, um, pretty much the rest of the ingredients in, and I'm just gonna bring it to the stove, bring it to a boil and pour it all over the potatoes. So we have our boiling sauce ready to go on the potatoes and we'll garnish with usually with chai but I couldn't find any at the market so just some cilantro and the potato salad is ready to go in the fridge to chill for at least about an hour in the meanwhile let's get to the main event of today are sausages. This is a vegetarian brew first, then we have a chili wurst, and we have a tape wurst. Of course, all of these are vegan. So I'm gonna cook these according to the instructions on the package, um, and then let's move on to our final course, which is dessert. We have baked German-style apples. So I have here two apples whole, where I cut off <laughs> the top bit and I cored it. Um, then I have mixed nuts that I chopped up into kind of small bits. I have almonds, I have walnuts and like hazelnut. You can pretty, you can use whatever you like you want. Um, you can add raisins as well. I have some powdered sugar. I have um, cinnamon. Usually more than this, you, if you were making this by yourself, you would put a little bit more than this. I don't like the flavor of cinnamon all that much, so I'm just gonna grab it down. And some uh, lemon juice. And of course, butter. Butter is so important. First things first, let's mix 
the cinnamon with the nuts, <clears throat> the powdered sugar. Uh, it really depends on how sweet you'd like it to be. I would like mine to be a little bit on the sweeter side. And <clears throat> softened butter. Really one teaspoon, one, yeah, one teaspoon is good enough. And we just mix them all together. Of course, I have my oven preheating at 450 Fahrenheit. And once this is done mixing, which I think it's about now, just gonna give it a little taste to see if the sweet part is okay. Mmm, yeah. I think I added too much cinnamon, but it really depends on your own personal preference. Then I'm gonna use the lemon juice. Uh, to just dab a little bit on the inside of the apples, including the core. Just so it doesn't get like overly brown, you know, that kind of stuff. What a fun way to use your pastry brush, right? So I cut kind of a shallow hole. I, I cored out the entire thing, but the hole is pretty shallow. If you want like more filling, um, then obviously you would put in like a deeper or cut a deeper hole uh, but I think for me the nut to uh, apple ratio I think this is good okay the last remaining step is to fill the apples with the nut mix I can see how putting raisins in at this point would be a good um, idea but I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of raisins especially like silk raisins and all that kind of stuff it's not it's not for me so <clears throat> let's just pack it a little bit more okay here we have it we have some like leftover kind of a mixture that of course you can just snack on i mean if you're into that kind of thing but anyway let's squeeze this Try to squeeze this shut and these are ready to go in the oven for about 40 minutes, um, 30 to 40 minutes, depends. And just like that, after I think about one and a half to two hours, we have our full Christmas dinner spread ready. So let's run through it. So the first one we have is our cheese uh, or queso spetzel um, with fried onions. Second, we have our main dinner plate, which is the vegan sausage. We have the potato salad and we have a very German thing, which is rotkohl, which is uh, red cabbage. So it's red cabbage with some um, apple. This was just store-bought. And for our dessert, we have the baked apple bratko uh, with some beautiful, look at that, some beautiful uh, toasted nuts inside. So my idea was to have like three different types of sausages, but that didn't turn out as you can see. The one sausage came out really, really well, but the other one just kind of, I don't know, became a mush. So now I'm going to serve that. Without further ado, let's taste. Oh, do you hear the crackle? Oh. Mm. The butter is so important. You can really taste the quality of the butter. So you use really good butter, but other but this is delicious. I can definitely see why online it says kind of like mac and cheese. Mm. To be honest, it can use a little bit more cheese, but any dish can always use a little bit more cheese, right? Mm. Let's move on to the main. I'm really, really excited for this for the potato salad. Let's let's make like the perfect bite. We'll do this. And we'll try to get some of this as well. Mm. This comes in 
a little bit unexpected. It brings in a lot of like sharpness, but let's talk about this salad. It's tangy, it's a little sweet, it's packed with flavor. It's really delicious. I think maybe I can cook the onion a little bit before like just boiling them straight off, but oh my god. And it really does help using a beef bouillon or a vegetarian bouillon, something like that, not just plain water. And then let's come to the main star of the show, at least according to me, the main star, which is the bretzel, which is just baked apple. Oh, it's still piping hot. You can serve this with like a vanilla sauce or like just some honey or just some simple syrup. I'm not going to do any of that. I am just going to taste it just as is. So let's eat the lid with some of the nuts. Mm. If you loved baked apple desserts, you're gonna really, really enjoy this. It's like it's like a weird mixture of apple pie with like a really nutty crumble topping. It's incredible. Oh my god, look at all the juices. Ah. The nuts are incredible. And there you have it, my first ever German Christmas spread. Now the reason I wanted to do this is because, as you know, we just moved uh, to Germany a couple months back, and I've been really diving deep into, you know, the food and food habits and uh, so on and so forth. So I thought this was a great way to kind of um, get into a little bit of German cooking, see if it's for me, and from what I cook today, it definitely is. Actually, should we try the vegan sausage mush that I created? I don't think it would taste the best right after the baked apple, but we're gonna serve it with a shot. Mm. I would not serve that. <laughs> it has a very gummy texture, chewy gummy texture. It's seasoned really, really well. But maybe, I don't know, I cooked it poorly, I didn't cook it the right way. I don't know, so we'll keep this aside. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've subscribed to the channel for more Vlogmas related content, but also after December, more Cloud Computing related content. So until my next video, I'll see you then. Bye!